Hi, and welcome to episode 17 of my free Java video course. My name is Markus Biel. In this episode, I'm going to talk about inheritance in Java. Inheritance is actually a very powerful feature of object-oriented languages. Similar to interfaces, inheritance allows to handle a group of similar objects in a uniform way. On top of that, however, it also allows to prevent code duplication by inheriting the members of a class from a parent class to its child classes. Um, the members of a class, in case you don't remember, are the instance variables and the instance methods. So everything that is not static. Okay, well, I guess this sounds very promising. The problem is, I think, inheritance is just a bit too powerful, actually. Well, if used incorrectly, inheritance can severely damage your code. So really take care and use inheritance sparsely. I mean, there are definitely justified cases to use inheritance. But whenever in doubt, I would not use it. Okay, and also, it actually requires some experience to know when to use inheritance and when to avoid it. To give you a real-world example, um, at the moment I'm working on a project of about maybe 15,000 lines of code, and there I used inheritance maybe once. Yeah, so there are alternatives to using inheritance. Um, about this we'll talk at a later time. Um, yeah, well, let's stop here for a moment because now the introduction is almost over. You see me in the bottom right corner talking to you. I'll very soon disappear because I'll jump into the code and I'll show you how to implement and use inheritance. Um, before that, one personal request. I'm doing these videos for you so that you can learn Java. I hope they're useful to you. If so, I would be very happy if you could give me your thumbs up um, in the bottom right corner of this video. and. Remember, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, well, enough of advertisement. Now, let's really do a coding session and jump into the code. Okay, so here you see I have prepared this SU test class for you. We are actually not really testing something now. This is just for demonstration purposes. Any arbitrary example. Um, this example is actually taken from the book Head First Java from Kati Sierra. She's really my favorite author of any Java related book. Highly recommended to read this and any other of her books. Um, in case you want to know, you can find a link to her books on my blog on marcus-beal.com. I have a must read section there you can find her books. Okay, now back to the code. So I have here the zoo class. So the idea is we have here an array of animals similar to the array of cars I had in the last episode where I introduced you to interfaces and I had a car array with BMW, a Mercedes and a Porsche. Now we have an animal array with a dog, a gorilla and a lion and a tiger. So you should already see um, interfaces and inheritance in Java, when you use them, here it looks quite similar. And this, by the way, is called polymorphy. You might have heard that. And the idea of polymorphy is that on the left side you have a variable, a reference variable of this super type or parent class, animal, but polymorphy. I mean, this also works with um, interfaces. So the idea is just 
that you have an interface or a super or parent class. And on the right side, an animal can be a dog, a gorilla, a lion, a tiger, anything. So different things can be assigned to the left variable. Because um, the polymorphy means like many sides. So can have different implementations on the right side. And they will all be handled uniformly here. I have prepared this feed animals method. Let's maybe jump here. Okay, so here you see I have prepared this for each loop. Everything that is red, we still have to implement. I have only prepared it. So we are iterating through my array. We still have to implement an eat method and we still have to implement the h method. Now, again, totally stupid arbitrary example, but just to have something to show you and to have variation, I, my idea was, I mean, totally arbitrary really, this depends on the design of your code that, like, because code is always like a model of the real world and so it totally depends on the example that you're working on. Well, in my example, I just defined that I said, well, every animal, a dog, a gorilla, a lion, tiger, they all eat in a different way. Because for example, a gorilla would probably eat, I don't know what it eats, grass or leaves or something. Well, a lion, I don't know, <laughs> eats some kind of meat. So therefore, my idea was to have an implementation a concrete implementation of the eat method in each different animal subtype and further my idea was to have this age method well every animal can be of a different age but the calculation well normally you wouldn't probably calculate the age but I mean this is just my stupid example I made it a method so the calculation would be the same for every animal so my idea is to have this as a concrete method in animal and have this as an abstract method. Because this is something here where interfaces are different, uh, sorry, yeah, where interfaces are different to inheritance. In interfaces you only have abstract methods and because you have only abstract methods the abstract keyword is um, not needed. But um, here we can, in inheritance, we can mix it. Maybe I should already jump now to the animal class. So in the animal class, this is still just a stupid simple class, totally empty. So you can use inheritance with just a simple class. And now let's implement two methods, concrete methods, public void eat. Later on I'll make this abstract, but for now I want it concrete. Public void h. Okay. So now maybe we should also do something in the method. And again, avoid system all print room. Just if you're like me doing an example, showing something, this is the exception to the rule, then it's okay-ish to use system all print room but avoid it in real code. Okay, so I say animal is eating. Well, this is not what we want. This is just step one. I said every animal is eating in its own way. And here I say age is calculated. Okay. Let's add here the dots too, just for fun. So, now, see this class looks totally like a regular class you have seen so many times before. Now, I go to the dog class and I want the dog to be an animal. Well, if this would be an interface, I would say implements, you remember. But it's not. It's a class and we extend the class and therefore the keyword is extends. Really, totally easy. Okay, so we say extends animal. And now this is already using inheritance. Now it looks like as if the dog class was empty, but 
In fact, we can already use these two methods in Doc. Okay, let's continue doing this for all the other subtypes. Gorilla extends animal. Line extends animal. These, by the way, are two interfaces. I also want to show you, and I might just as well do it now. We can mix using in interfaces and using extending classes using inheritance. We can mix that. <clears throat> the question is, should we first say extends or first implements? Well, there is a rule. It must be that we say extends first and then implements, because in Java we have single inheritance, so we can only extend a single class, but we can implement any number of interfaces. And therefore, this is a comma separated list. And therefore, to make it a bit easier, it's at the end. So we say implements. And now I can say this interface loggable and comma printable. So an interface plays a role. So a line can play the role of being a loggable when, like you mentioned, the code is running on production at a certain time or we want to lock the line or we want to print it and therefore we can implement this interface. Again, this is polymorphy, that a line can be a loggable. Okay, so you see there is something red because now we have a lot of methods that we have to implement. First of all, from the animal. I mean, the order is arbitrary. We can also start with a printable. So there was a public void, um, was it print, I hope, method. And then there was a public void, I think, message for the loggable. This might have, yeah, you see? So the rule is when we implement an interface method as well as when we when we implement an abstract method from animal the signature the method signature must be exactly the same we can't say void here because the interface said it must be a string return something just for our little example okay and in here i say system out print ln printing okay get the idea so now there is still the eat method missing no actually it's not because we made it concrete um so we don't have to implement the eat method i'm already a bit too fast so see, the red is gone. Everything so far seems okay, but there is still a problem in Sue test. Let's check this. Ah, the tiger. We still have to do the tiger. Extends, because the tiger was not an animal yet. Maybe we should look at this again. I mean, this is interesting. So see, all those classes were all already extending the animal. And so these are already animals, but the tiger, is not yet required. We need an animal, but found is a tiger. Okay, so let's make this also an animal. Now it's an animal and now it's working. The red is gone. Okay, but we still haven't done what we wanted because I said I want this method abstract. Now, you probably remember from when I explained interfaces, an abstract method does not have this method body, the implementation, but just the method signature, this here on the top, is the method signature. So let's remove the body and we have to say abstract. In the interface we didn't have to because in an interface all the methods are by definition abstract, but here, I mean, how would Java know? There's a concrete method and this one is supposed to be abstract. So therefore in inheritance, we have to explicitly set abstract. 
But now there is a difference because if one method is abstract, the whole class has to be abstract. Now, what does this mean? Because actually this changes a bit of the behavior. And this again depends on your personal design of the program that you're writing. An abstract class cannot be instantiated. Now we cannot say the compiler will uh, not allow us. We can't say new animal. An abstract class is like just the contract, just the protocol. Pretty much the same as an interface. It's just a raw definition. But we cannot create instances from an abstract class. We can only do so from con concrete classes. But concrete classes cannot have abstract methods. So this is something that you have to clearly think of. And also, I mean, I said another warning. I said that this can be used to prevent code duplication. Now you might think, well, cool, I just create some tool class and this has any method that I might need at any time, for example, age. And um, then I can say animal extends tool. Because even the inheritance can have several layers. So even though um, doc says extends animal, animal again could extend some class. So now we could say extends some tool class. I haven't implemented that, but I hope you get the idea. Well, even though you can do so, you should not do so. Because the rule is you have to apply an is a test. Also, this is from the book of Kathy Sierra, uh, Head First Java. There you say an animal is a tool. No, it's not. So because it's not a tool, we don't say tool. Because otherwise, this can really get nasty. <clears throat> And um, so you shouldn't do that as a recommendation, but really a strong recommendation. Okay, so yeah, it still has to be made abstract because of this abstract method here. And we have to remove new animal, as I said, doesn't work. Okay, now everything red has gone. Now let's go into our classes again. See, now there is a problem. Now that this method is abstract, we also forced to implement it. So we have to say public void eat, and we have to implement this method. And again, stupid example system out print ln dog is eating dot dot dot. Okay. So, gorilla is eating in a different way, eats, I don't know, grass or something. Gorilla is eating leaves. Um, next one, the lion. The lion is eating something again. And the tiger is eating something. So in this case, they all implement the eat method in their own unique way. So in reality, you wouldn't, of course, have your system out print on, but some specific tiger related logic that only fits for tiger. And this is why we have it here. And all the logic that fits for all animals, you put here. And this, by the way, I mean, on the one hand, this is handy. But to me, this is really a double-sided double sword. I mean, this is handy and can help. But on the other hand, it also is really complex. Because when you're in a class like Sue, how do you know which animal implements eat and which uh, animal just inherits the eat method? Same for the age method. Because we could, of course, again mix that. And we can also overwrite a method. So, for example, age, this one is implemented, but we could say 
gorilla is implementing the age by itself. I don't know, something. So, this is like how you could define an exception to the rule. Um, you could say, well, my gorilla does not use the age method, but instead the age method is replaced by exactly this method. And the way this is done is the signature must be, this method signature here must be pretty much looking the same. You can't like change the return value or the parameter values. Well, you see, you can, but it's just not using inheritance now. This is also why it's not yellow, but gray. Um, this is called overloading a method. Overloading a method means you implement a method that has the same name as another method, but it's just something completely different. So um, this has nothing to do with inheritance. If you want to inherit the method and override it, I mean override it, it has to have the same signature. Okay, there is one exception. And for this, I have to introduce a new visibility modifier. I think shortly I talked about it in an earlier episode, but I didn't really explain you what it means. And this is protected. Now, what means protected? Protected means it's visible on the one hand, similar to default or package level visibility and the whole package. So now we can use the H method in SU. See, this is not red. It also means it's visible in any class that extends animal. In our case now, we have all the classes in the same package, but imagine we had a car saying extend animal. I mean, of course we should not, this would be stupid, but just technically, not from a design perspective, we could then use the age method because it's protected. So the visibility is to any class that inherits from animal on top any class that is in the same package. And this again makes it complex. You see how much I have to explain so that you understand. And this is why I would avoid using it. So I just want you to passively know when someone else uses it, but I would really avoid it. But so protected visibility is less visible than public. And what I am allowed to do is I can increase the visibility in a child class. So where was I? Here. So I'm allowed, you see it works. I can say public void. Ah, oh, no, this is still not inherited. Now it is, it's yellow again. So I can say public and now I can also say protected which at the moment is the same visibility as in the parent class animal, but I'm not allowed to say private. This will give me a compiler error. Attempting to assign weaker access privileges. It was protected. So you're allowed to make it public, but not less than protected. The idea behind that is, I mean, an abstract method defines a contract, a protocol, exactly like with interfaces. By saying extends animal, you promise any other class in the Java universe, I am an animal and you have a method that is public and you can call it. And I mean, <laughs> imagine the crazy stuff that would happen if there is one class that just does not fulfill this contract. So this is why it's not working. It has to have the same visibility. Okay. Then also, I mean, I said we inherit the members of a class. And I said the members of the class are the instance methods. These are the instance methods and the instance variables. So you can also have here a protected um, int h. And this will also be inherited. We can now say 
directly accesses in here. I mean, this is the h method. Maybe I should now here have a public void h method instead of the eat method. Okay. And now I can say this dot h or just h. Not a statement. Yeah, of course not. It's not finished. It's 45. So this would now set the h to 45. Or just h because here we don't need the, the, the sys because we know what we mean. Um, even though this is possible, we inherit the h field. I would not make use of it. Well, first of all, because I don't like protected, as I said. And second, because I think this kind of violates the capsulation because the animal should be the only one working on its internal variables. Okay, so avoid protected and avoid like making the variables, the members, the, um, the instance members visible. If we have a static method, public static something. Well, I have to implement it, of course. This can be used, uh, static void, for example, by saying animal dot something. This can also be used now from Sue or wherever. So we could say animal dot something. Yeah, you see, it's also form formatted differently. So we directly see this is a static method, but this will not be inherited. So you cannot like override this or so. In the gorilla class, again, you can say animal dot something. Well, actually you can even say, and this is a bit weird, gorilla dot something, but this is not inheritance, it's just Java is a bit smart here, the compiler is a bit smart, it knows Gorilla is an animal, so it realizes this is an animal and then it takes the static method. But this is still not inheritance. Okay, let, let me remove that. I hope I haven't confused you too much with that static. Just remember we're only inheriting the members of the class the instance methods and the instance variables. Okay, well, I think this is pretty much it. Maybe I should execute it again. And now we see dog is eating, h is calculated. Gorilla is eating, gorilla is implementing the h by itself. This was, I was overwriting the h method in Gorilla and only in Gorilla. Lion is eating, H is calculated. Tiger is eating, H is calculated. So inheritance really is a complex beast. And in conclusion, use it sparsely. Only use it when you can say, when you can apply the is a test. A dog is an animal, a gorilla is an animal, a lion is an animal, a tiger is an animal, a tool is not an animal. So you will not say tool extends animal, never. Um, if you're just looking for something to like not copy and paste, to not duplicate code, you can do something else. Put your code into a its own object, a tool object, and then always you can use composition. You could say, for example, a tiger has, I don't know, um, has a leg, if that makes sense now or not, I don't know. So leg, leg, and then you, if you have a method, for example, walk, You can say leg dot walk, and if you have another animal, 
that also needs a, uh, it's called eat still. So this would be walk. So now if you have another animal that should also use the leg, should also use this method, you can also make it to have this member. And this, by the way, can and also should be an interface. So that really makes it much more flexible, actually, even than inheritance, because using an interface, you can exchange the behavior at runtime. This is something I showed you in the last episode, talking about interfaces, where I said you could have some condition if, I don't know, Sunday, use this implementation and otherwise the other implementation. I mean, this is just not real code, just very fast, uh, else. I just hope you get the idea. I could say, if Sunday leg equals to my fast leg or legs, you know, and the other days I'm not so fast. I say use the slow lag. And then after the instantiation, I would say lag dot walk. Okay, so of course, I mean, this if else again introduces some complexity. So whenever you design something, there's always pro and con. You have to think what do I really need? But so you can use this just to give you one example to not use inheritance and still not duplicate your code. Okay, let me remove that. Don't want it to be red. Want it to be working. Okay, now let's maybe recap before I finish this video. So we talked about inheritance, we talked about polymorphy, um, I showed you you can use composition and there's also actually a design principle, it's called favor composition over inheritance. Um, I showed you you can mix using inheritance with, where was that, in one of these classes, yeah, with Interfaces, I showed you, you can implement several interfaces. You can only extend one class. So I cannot say already when I do the comma, something is wrong. So I cannot say this animal too. Oh, this doesn't work, just believe me for now. Or, I mean, yeah, this is also a class which is implemented, yeah. So you see, class cannot extend multiple classes. This works in C++ and is even more nasty than single inheritance. This causes something called the deadly diamond of death. But I will not continue. This is too, too much for now. You can Google this, deadly diamond of death, because Java doesn't support multiple inheritance. Okay, I could continue forever talking, you see, but I stop now. Okay, so again, remember, give me a thumbs up on the video, would be highly appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, thanks, and see you next time.